Hey guys, you ready for a science lesson today? Yeah! Adeline, are you still in your PJs? Dad, you're not even wearing pants. Uh. Alright, let's do some staff circuits. Yeah! <laughs> hey, it's Shay. And actually today it's going to be Mr. Harrigal. I haven't been Mr. Harrigal in a few years. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I know a lot of people are stuck at home and I'm going to be doing some lessons with my kids. So I figured it would be an awesome idea just to maybe film a couple of these and share it with other parents. You can share this with your kids. Today we're going to be using a snap circuit uh, which can be purchased on Amazon. We uh, purchased this a few years back. Snap circuits are actually just a really fun tool to be able to teach about electricity. The kids will just pick up the snap circuits and start playing with it randomly um, and building really cool things. Uh, it comes with a couple of booklets that allows you to have a map of how to put these circuits together and uh, build something neat. Uh, today we're actually going to do a little bit of the science behind the snap circuits itself. And so just to start out, I want to know if you guys can tell me what is this? Battery. Battery. And what does a battery do? It sends electricity to other parts of the snap circuits. Okay, cool. So electricity is the key part here, right? Can you guys name a few things that use electricity? Uh, like a camera. A camera. A coffee pot. Coffee pot. A fridge. A fridge. Just microwave. A microwave. Just about everything that we use in our daily lives uses electricity, right? Except for plants. Actually, it's funny you bring that up because it really all comes down to one word that starts with an E. Not electricity, but... Electrons? What comes from the sun that's so important? What do plants get from the sun to grow? Energy. Energy, right? Okay, and what do batteries have stored inside of them? Energy. Energy. So in order to understand what a battery does, we actually have to understand what an atom is, and what an atom does, and what electricity actually is. Do you guys know what electricity is? Uh, it's things that help people, that help things move. Okay, what, what do you mean by that? Like what kind of things? I mean, I mean work. That helps things work. Oh, that's true, yeah. So the form of energy will do work on something else, right? Mm -hmm. And when it does work on that, it might make a light bulb glow. So let's take a quick look at an atom. In order to do that, let's go over to my office whiteboard. So do you guys know what an atom is? Yeah, it's, it's the particle that makes up everything everywhere. That's really good. We can't see atoms because they're so small, right? They're mm -hmm. like minuscule mm -hmm. and we're made up of billions of atoms ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Carbon based mostly. Yeah. Like an atom is this small. Smaller. Yeah. Do you guys know what the simplest atom is? The no. smallest atom? So hydrogen is the smallest atom and hydrogen is represented with the atomic symbol of H. So we'll just do that for simplicity. It has what's called a proton and a neutron. And those are in the nucleus, the middle of the atom. And then on the outside, yes. it has what's called an electron. And this is definitely not drawn on the scale because these are actually much bigger than electrons. Electrons are really, really tiny, but there's an attractive force between an electron and a proton. A proton is actually defined with a positive charge. Do you know what an electron is going to be charged with? My, uh, a negative. A negative charge. All right. Good job, Lila. And yeah, and in reality, what's happening is this electron is moving all around the nucleus. You're like an electron because you're always moving. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> So anyway, because these are moving all around super fast and blah, 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 there's an attractive force that keeps this electron bonded with this center here. What we know is that opposite charges, positive and negative, and negative attract. But we also know that negative and negative repel. They don't want to be anywhere near each other. 
So another hydrogen atom comes in here. Positive. Oops. Our neutron. And our electron. Thank you. This electron's gonna be attracted to that nucleus, right? Because of the opposite. But it's closer to this proton, so it's gonna actually be more attracted to this. So it would require quite a bit of force for this electron to possibly leave this nucleus. Do you know what most wires are made out of? Copper. Copper. Copper, right? Okay, so if we have something like copper, it, copper actually has, I'm just gonna do this, 29 protons in its nucleus. And when it's perfectly balanced, it has, 29 electrons on the outside. If we have some sort of electric field that is actually pulling through here that these electrons are attracted to, and you can make an electric field by like creating like a positive charge somewhere else, these electrons will start to pop off the atom. Okay? And they'll go and they'll find another atom that has a missing spot. But then so, another atom will come and replace the spot. I mean, another, uh, what's it called? Electron. electron. Will uh, replace the spot of the ones that are moving. Totally. See, so it's kind of like a game of leapfrog. So if you have a, a, an atom here, an atom here, and an atom here of copper, then what happens is, is an electron will go to here, and it'll fill in here, and at the same time, one will leave here and go to here. And it'll leap from atom to atom and at to atom, all right, as it moves. And that flow of electrons is called current. Have you ever heard of current before? Mm. Have you heard of like current in like a river? Yeah, I think I've heard of, of it in uh, the Wizard of Oz. You remember the lion wants cur current and he doesn't have any? <laughs> <laughs> That's courage, sweetie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> if you think about a river, and the river is flowing, all right, that flow of the river is the current, and the stronger the current, the faster the river is flowing, right? It's the same thing with electricity, okay, and electrons. The faster and the stronger they're flowing, the higher the current is, okay? All right, we'll get back to that in a little bit. How are you guys holding up? Good. You holding up okay? Yeah. All right, so what have we learned so far? Just retrace. About atoms and current. Mm-hmm. And electrons. Electrons. All right, so basically currents, the flow electrons. of electrons, right? Oh, yeah, and batteries. Yeah. Okay, so if I take this balloon, yeah. since we've talked about like charges repelling, let me just show you what I mean with this balloon. Since Adeline, you really didn't do your hair today too much, right? So you don't mind if I use it? Yeah, I don't do you, mind. You don't mind? All right, it's already kind of staticky looking. All right, so if I take this balloon and I rub it on your head, what I'm doing is creating friction, and friction is allowing electrons to jump off onto the surface of this balloon. And what do you think is gonna happen? My hair is gonna stick to the balloon. You'll see, yeah. So the balloon surface is now negatively charged, but because there's a void of electrons on Adeline's head, it, Adeline's head has a positive charge. So I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Take it off and then put it back on. Put it back <laughs> Let's see. Look, I'm like not even touching your hair, <laughs> and look at it go. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That's awesome. So the balloon's got a negative charge, Adeline's head's got a positive charge, and they attract to each other. Why? Because all the electrons on Adeline's head, they don't wanna be near themselves, they wanna jump to the balloon to try to get away from Adeline's head. <laughs> so that was a static electric force, an example, and it's a dynamic force, which really all forces are dynamic, but when current flows, it's, a, it's gotta be a continuous flow of electrons. The way that energy moves or is stored is one of two ways. It's stored as potential energy, and it moves as kinetic energy. So this is just a simple demonstration for you guys. Water is being stored inside of this bucket. And so... Kind of like a battery. 
it's kind of like a battery, yeah. So what would you physically have to do in order for this to to be able to move? You'd have to you'd actually have to like maybe lift it up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if we lift it up, okay, like mm -hmm. this, we've actually given this water what's called potential energy. Alright, see? There's a there's a force acting on this water. What is that invisible force that wants What's that invisible force that wants to pull it to the ground? Gravity. Gravity, right? So gravity wants to make it fall, right? But we have held it up here and it has the stored energy. But if I take it and I allow it to flow, all right, then gravity is going to pull it down towards the ground. Okay? And that's the same idea as like a battery because the battery has stored energy on one part, but if we allow it to flow with, let's say, a copper wire, then electrons will flow through it, all right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like the current of a river. A lake is just like a stationary pocket of water, right? Yeah, until you move it. But if you move it, then all of a sudden it, it has a current, right? Yeah, but it, it moves when you cannonball into it. It moves when you cannonball into it, that's right, yeah, because you apply a force to it. All right, in order to demonstrate how electricity flows, we're gonna use one of the oldest experiments known to man. We're gonna make a lemon battery, all right, which I think just about everybody in their childhood does at least once, right? Have you guys done a lemon battery in school? No. No, you haven't yet? All right, cool. All it really takes is a lemon, you need a copper penny, and then you need uh, galvanized steel, which gives you a zinc coating. Lila's gonna poke the screw in. Let's get that in there, Lila. That's okay. Okay. Ew. You have it come out just a little bit. Okay. All right, and then Adeline is gonna put the penny in, but let me slice a, a hole for her. All right, go ahead. Stick it hard. There you go, perfect. In order for a battery to happen, you need two electrodes, like Lila said. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have zinc and copper. They have a different electronegativity, which means the, their desire to absorb electrons. Copper mm -hmm. wants to absorb electrons more than zinc wants to absorb electrons. Electrons will flow from the zinc to the copper. So once we connect this zinc to this copper, electrons will flow here, which will leave this zinc positive, and then the and then the zinc ions will go into solution inside of the lemon itself. That's why we need an electrolyte. This is a multimeter, and it measures several things. One is it measures current, two it measures voltage, and three it measures resistance. And Four, it measures. Uh, a lemon battery. Yeah. What we're gonna do here with our lemon battery is because electricity is only flowing in one way, it's called direct current. So we're gonna set the upper limit to 20 volts. So I've changed the volt multimeter and then just connect to both terminals and let's see what we get here. Hold on, let's get it so the camera can see. Ooh. All right, keep it keep it steady. I don't think you can go right in the middle, right in there. Yeah, perfect. Oh, look at that. So it's like 0 0.88 volts. 0.88 volts. 0.88. And this is like a really good method to check batteries. If you don't know if your batteries are dead, let's just see. All right, can you girls help me check this one? On the side of the battery, it says 1.5 volts. So when you guys are measuring, it's measuring 1.49. So is this battery pretty charged up, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Batteries over time will run out of electricity. So on a battery, this side is called the anode. Okay, this is the negative terminal. And then this side is called the cathode. And in between is the electrolyte. Cool, right? Yeah. So, when you connect the two, you can have electricity from you can have electrons flow from the negative to the positive, and therefore you get current. Current. Mm -hmm.